fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. This is a story of one of the most mysterious characters to appear in the early days of the West. He was a fabulous individual, a man whose presence brought fear to the lawless and hope to those who wanted to make this frontier land their home. He was known as the Lone Ranger. For months now, the Wells Fargo Company has been plagued by stagecoach holdups. One for every cross you see. Only in Boone County does Wells Fargo have a perfect record of no successful holdups. And that's because the stage line franchise there is held by one of the most remarkable women of the Old West, Cannonball McKay. Yeah, get along there. That's all right, Clem. I can manage. Soft-spoken, hard-driving, sharp-shooting. She had always been respected as the most honest stage driver in all Boone County, until Clem Jones came to work for her. Friendless, half-crippled, only two weeks out of prison. Why has Cannonball just taken him in as her assistant? That's one of the answers the Lone Ranger and Tonto are here to find out. I'm going into town to see my old friend, Marshal Hanley. I'll see you in camp later. He'll be waiting for you, sir. Five silver. Got you that time. You sure did. <laughs> Come on in. Howdy, Marshal. Jim, he's masked. Sure he's masked. This is the Lone Ranger. Meet Doc Tate. Glad to know you, Doctor. Well, what brings you here? I'm curious about Cannonball McKay and Clem Jones. Reckon nobody knows much about them, friend. Not even me. And I'm Clem's doctor. Oh? Something wrong with him? Poor old fella has a bad arm. Heard it years ago in that stagecoach holdup that sent him to jail. I see. But if Cannonball's as honest as they say, why should she take in an ex-convict as a partner? That's something we'd all like to know, but Cannonball won't talk. Marshal, I'd like a closer look at those two. That's easy enough arranged. The stage is due in any minute now. Come along. Fine. On to Rushville. Ten minutes. You're not shoving on to anywhere, Cannonball. What do you mean? My contract with Wells Fargo is still good. I'm pulling out of here on schedule. No, you're not. Wells Fargo's not going to lose any shipments if I can help it. Well, I never lost them a shipment of gold yet, have I? No. But you never had a crook working for you. Up till now. Nobody's going to call me a crook again. Oh, no? Pull that trigger at Clem Collins and it'll be the last shot you'll ever fire. Put up your gun. You better do like he says. This masked man's a friend of mine and he can outshoot even you, Cannonball. What's the ruckus, Cannonball? Me and Hash are just squabbling clean over in our cafe. Hey, who's the masked hombre? I'm in the same business as the marshal. I try to keep law and order. That's right, boys. Now, Cannonball, supposing you tell me why you drew your gun. I had to, mister. This varmint was calling my helper a crook. Everybody knows he just did 10 years in the pen for holding up a stagecoach. Look, Collins, I hire who I want. Clem's a friend of mine. He served his time, and I know he's reformed. Hasn't he been punished enough? Losing all those years, getting his arm crippled. No jailbird's gonna haul freight for Wells Fargo. You're out of business, Cannonball, as of now. Hold on, Collins. You're forgetting about Cannonball's contract. Read that contract. It says I got the right to hold up shipments anytime I think there's danger involved. I'm holding them all up till I get word from the head office. It's not fair you should take it out on Cannonball just because you hate me. If it weren't for this arm, I'd whop the hide off of you. Come on, Clem. See you after a while, Marshal. I have some business to take care of. That a doc, you look worried. I sure hope Cannonball's right about Clem's reforming. What do you mean? I'm thinking of that monthly gold shipment in the Wells Fargo office. But the state's not running, it stays right there, with no one to guard it but Collins. Sure could be mighty tempting to an old hold-up man like Clem. 
Well, don't worry about it. If Clem starts acting up, I think the Lone Ranger and I can handle him all right. I'll see you later. What you learned, Kimasabi? Practically nothing, Tano. And yet I still think my hunch is right. Why should this be the only town in the territory that hasn't been robbed? Unless the robbers live here and don't want to throw any suspicion on themselves. You think maybe that Clem fellow robber? No, it couldn't be Clem. He's been in jail until recently. Then maybe Cannonball. Maybe. A Cannonball doesn't act like a crook. No one who'd fight to protect old Clem the way she did could really be bad. Maybe that just put up job, throw you off track. I don't know, Tano. You ride into town. Keep your eye on Cannonball and Clem. Whoever's behind these robberies is dangerous and very clever. We've got to find out who it is at any cost. You go ahead. Huh. Clem. Oh, Clem. Hi, Doc. Want me for something? Just thought you might like to earn ten dollars. I got to get this letter to Rushville right away, and with the stage not running, there's no way to send it. Ten dollars. I didn't think there was anyone in this town who'd trust me with that much money. <laughs> I'm on your side, Clem. If you take the road through Hidden Valley, it'll take you but a few hours. Thanks, Doc. You're a nice guy. Doc, the office is closed today. Heard you were took sick, so I came right over. What is this? Who told you that? I'm feeling fine. You won't be for long. Wait a minute. I, I don't get it. Open that safe, quick. You mean you're the one that's been pulling all them holdouts? Who else would be smart enough to? You heard what he said, open the safe. Sure. Anything you say. What do you know? Old Doc Tate, the leader of a hold-up gang. Quick, Ash. On your horse. Now we got you dressed like Clem. Try to act like him. Remember, you got a stiff arm. Just like you say, Doc. Be sure the marshal sees you heading for Hidden Valley. That's where I sent Clem. Shot. Somebody run out of the express office. Looks like Clem Jones. He's heading for Hidden Valley, Marshal. It's Collins, Marshal. He's dead. He got away with all the gold. Let's go after him. Then he can't get far. Like taking candy from a baby. Some candy. You're going back to town. What for? I didn't do anything. I was Save just... your voice. We're holding you for the murder of Jim Collins. Murder? That's right. 
We'll have a chance to explain back at the Wells Fargo office. Get going. Me follow Clement to plenty trouble, Kimo Subby. Him arrested for murder. Murder? Ah. Marshal think him kill Collins, but him not guilty. Where's Clem now, Tonto? Marshal and Posse take him to express office. We're right into town. You can tell me the details on the way. Come on. Over there, Clem. Sit down. All right, where's the gold? What gold? The gold you stole from this office just a little while ago. I didn't steal any gold. No, and I don't suppose you killed Collins either. But I wasn't here. Don't lie, Clem. I heard you threaten him this morning, and we all saw you run out of this office right after the shooting. I don't know what you're talking about. I was just delivering this here letter to Rushville for Doc Tate. That right, Kimosabe. Me see Doc give him letter. Well, now I know you're lying, Clem. This letter is addressed to the Second National Bank. There isn't any Second National Bank in Rushville. What's the matter here, Marshal? Harrison Forkney told me about Clem killing Collins. I just took his body over to the undertaker. Anything else I can do? Yeah, I'm glad you got here, Doc. Clem says you gave him this letter to deliver. Why, Clem? Whatever made you want to tell a lie like that? That no lie. Me tell. Wait. Tell him the truth, Doc. You, you give me $10 to deliver that letter. No, Clem. Would I pay you $10 to deliver a letter with nothing written on it? So that's it. You framed me so you could steal the gold yourself. Well, I'll get you. you. Let's put a rope around his neck, Marshal. Yeah, that'll make him tell us where the gold's hid. Hold it. You're not putting any rope around Clem's neck. I come as soon as I heard you were arrested, Clem. I know you never killed Collins. That isn't what the evidence says, Cannonball, and I'm taking him to jail. When everybody's already made up their mind he's guilty, he won't be safe there a minute. Don't worry, I'm not aiming to keep him there. It's too late to leave now, but you hitch up your stage in the morning and we'll drive him to Rushville. That way, he'll get a fair trial. All right, Marshal. But if anyone harms Clem, you'll have me to reckon with. I'm locking my prisoner up and I don't want any trouble. Come here, Porky. We gotta finish Clem off. Before he gets that fair trial the marshal was talking about. Why, Doc? He's got no way of proving he's innocent. Maybe not. But that masked hombre who came to town this morning, I don't like the way he sniffs out the truth. Hash, reckon you could plant blasting powder under the jail without the marshal catching you? Sure, Doc. But I'll have to go up to the shack to get it. How long will it take? Hour and a half. All right. Set it to go off two hours from now. 5 p.m. sharp. Let's go. Why you not let me help Clem by telling truth? Because it would be just your word against Doc's, Tonto. The only way to prove Doc's guilty is to find out where he's hidden that gold. How we make him talk? By outsmarting him. We don't have much time. It's a terrible trap Doc's setting for Clem. I wonder what would happen if he got caught in it himself. Deadly weapon, Cannonball. What do you want? Same thing you do, to help Clem. Cannonball, the men who framed Clem are planning to kill him before we can prove he's innocent. I figured as much. That's why I'm loading this. Do you think that's the best way? It's the only way. Those hombres don't care nothing about law and order, but they got a lot of respect for lead when it's coming at them. You won't solve anything by stooping to their methods. What am I supposed to do then? Wait till they murder Clem, like they did Collins? I have a plan I think will prevent that. I'm on my way to see Doc Tate now. Do you suppose you could persuade Porky Wade to be at the Marshal's office right away? I reckon so. Why? Because he and Doc think Hash is going to blow the jail up at 5 o'clock. Now, what they don't know is this. My friend Tonto will be under the jail. Not Hash. What's the trouble, Marshal? The masked man said you wanted to see me right away. Oh, yes. Uh, sit down, Doc. We just wanted to ask you a few questions. Get in there. Porky. What's the meaning of this, Marshal? Forcing law-abiding citizens to come here at the point of a gun. 
From what the Lone Ranger's been telling me, I'm not sure anymore just who is law-abiding and who isn't. <laughs> if you're not, Marshal, you're the only man in town who's confused. Now, what about those questions you wanted to ask me? Sure, Doc, right away. Just let me fill out this report first. Nothing like uh, taking plenty of time and doing things right, is there? Marshal, you were in a big enough hurry to get us over here. Let's get to those questions. Yes, I'm sorry to keep you waiting. Suppose you do the asking. There are just two questions. Who murdered Collins and where's the gold hidden? Seems to me Clem's the one to answer that. No, Doc. You are. Me? <laughs> There's no evidence against me. Maybe not. But I have reasons to believe you're guilty. I'm going to prove it if we have to stay here and question you all night. All night. Why so interested in the clock, Porky? You've been watching it for the last 20 minutes. No reason. Doc, what I want to know is this. You're not moving. What is this engine? Put up hands. Sure. Whatever you say. Knows the engine. Now you get the same as Clem and the Marshal. You've been asking the same question over and over. And you still haven't got a thing against me. I demand to be released. What's your hurry, Doc? We've only just begun. Tell me once again. Where were you when Collins was shot? I've already told you. In my office. Look, Doc, it's nearly five. We've got to get out of here. Shut up. I'm not going to stay here and die. If you don't tell him, I will. Tell us what, Doc? Blasting powder. Under the jail. It's set to go at five o'clock. You must have had a good reason for wanting to blow up the jail and kill Clem. Don't waste time talking. We've got to get out. My friends and I will. But you and Porky will stay right here. Unless you prefer to tell the truth. I've told you the truth. There's nothing else. All right, Marshal. Lock them up. Inside, you two. Come on, let's go. like those two rather stay here and die than tell the truth. We'd better get out of here before it's too late. Wait! Wait! I'll talk! Oh, no, you won't. Preach! All of you! This bag carries more than medicine, mister. So I see. Unlock this cell, Marshal. I'm afraid he's got us. All he's got is a gun, Marshal. You have the key. That's worth a lot more as long as that clock keeps ticking. Are you crazy? Don't you realize we'll all be born the kingdom come in another minute? That's right, unless you talk first. I'll never talk. You'll die with me. What's that noise? Now, you ought to know, Doc. Didn't you tell someone to plant blasting powder under the jail? Hush! Hush! Don't light the fuse. It's me, Porky! You can't hear you, Porky. The jail's built solid. Get us out of here. Get us out! Not until you tell us the truth. All right. I'll tell. It was Porky killed Collins. That's a lie! It was Doc! And the gold's hid in his medicine cabinet. You fool, now you've given them proof. Look out! Oh! Cannonball's been shot! A bullet wound in the hand is hardly fatal. Better get that glove off, Marshal. You got a gun. You all right, Kimasabi? Yes, Dono. Where's Hash? Him tied up outside. You have close call. Jail almost blew up on time. 
Why, that's a wedding ring. I didn't know you were married, Cannonball. Who's your husband? Clem is, Marshal. And he's the best husband a woman ever had. Cannonball, you promised not to tell. Oh, it's better this way, Clem, honey. I'm not ashamed of being married to you. Why did you keep it a secret, Cannonball? Clem made me promise, mister. He said that I'd be hurt bad enough having him work for me. He said if the folks here knew I was married to him, they'd never have nothing to do with me again. Well, that was foolish of you, Clem. If Cannonball's friends turned against her because of you, why, they wouldn't be worth having. I reckon you're right, friend. You hurry up and get well, Cannonball, and then we'll face them all together. I think you'll find out from now on that most of them will be on your side. Dad Bennett, these new petticoats itch something fierce. <laughs> Wished I was still wearing my old duds. Say, I plumb forgot what a pretty female you was when you dressed up proper. Kiss me, woman. In front of all them horses? <laughs> what do you think I am, a sissy? If anybody deserves a kiss, it's those two. Tonto and the Lone Ranger. <laughs> 